In an ideal world, no shooter would ever get to pull the trigger. But what can we do to try to stop those who may be contemplating that kind of violence before they act? It's what a former Dallas police officer, who in fact was in the command center the night five Dallas officers were shot and killed, thinks about a lot. He spoke with our Robbie Owens as we search for answers in the wake of the Uvalde mass shooting. A school, a grocery store, a movie theater, a church. A police protected downtown Dallas march. Shots fired. Yeah, when you hear that as an officer, it's, it takes it to the whole, a whole nother world. And then you hear officer down. Terrence Hopkins is a 31-year veteran of the Dallas Police Department and president of the Black Police Association. He was in the police command center when gunfire erupted on July 7, 2016. It didn't seem real, but it was real. Sniper fire rained down on a peaceful protest, injuring more than a dozen and murdering five officers. The shooter, an Army veteran with an arsenal of weapons and a mind warped by hate. There's people out there getting fed that stuff right now, Robbie. Who needs to sell propagandized hate? The market for hate flourishing online. It's a fire hose. DPD's Major Stephen Williams is the intelligence division commander. These systems allow us to identify locations, times, dates, uh, words, tones, phrases. Social media threats are just part of what he oversees at one of three North Texas fusion centers. Established in the wake of the 9-11 terror attacks, the centers investigate threats and create a pathway for all levels of law enforcement from local to federal to communicate more effectively. And then we've at the tip if we need more follow-up, more information, they can communicate with us. Much of the conversation now focused on the terror that's being groomed at home. He says the center saw an increase in activity following the Uvalde school shooting and shares an example. There was some dialogue between a student that was very unsettling to a parent who observed it. The parent then submitted the tip to us uh, and then we then were able to identify who uh, the student was and then partnerships with DISD uh, DISD detectives and DP detectives were able to go out and speak to that parent and the child to, to figure out what's going on. The major points out that not every incident proves to be a valid threat. Often reports reveal a cry for help and they respond to those with what's called ride care teams. It's a police officer, a firefighter and a clinician. So it's a it's more of not a law enforcement approach. It's more of a clinician driven community based response to addressing mental health issues. Not sure if a concern is worth reporting. I'd rather have the tip. Major Williams doesn't hesitate. Better to report than regret. Because that's my biggest concern is that we see stuff all the time and we don't say something. And I'm asking for our community to say something. We have to start looking at individuals that are in our circles who may start changing, you know, their thought processes, their comments, uh, because to me a lot of this could be prevented in those early stages. That was our Robbie Owens reporting. And I want you to know that her story that you just saw is just one of many that you're going to see in searching for answers tomorrow night. You're gonna be hearing directly from mass shooting survivors, their families, and then we take their questions directly to our elected leaders who have said they need to do something. Dropping our newscast tomorrow night, no commercials, only searching for answers. That's tomorrow, 10 o'clock, appointment viewing. We hope you make time for this and be with us right here on CBS 11.